Have you been made the data protection officer or DPO at your workplace? Don't panic. In the time it takes you to have a cup of coffee, this free video will take you through your role and responsibilities. And you might be surprised given all the noise about DPOs. And stay with us because at the end, I'll share a bonus tip that could really make appointing your DPO a lot simpler. Hi, I'm Robert Bohr, the founder and CEO of Keepable. We save you time, money, and stress on GDPR and give you a great answer for the board and customers. This video is part of Privacy Kitchen, free video help with all things privacy. If you're new here, please do click subscribe and notify to hear about awesome Privacy Kitchen videos. So the big question, what does a DPO do? Well, let's start with the easy part and run through the minimum tasks as set out in GDPR itself. First, it's to inform and advise the organization and its employees of their legal obligations under GDPR and other applicable data protection laws. To do this, regulators say a DPO must be involved properly and in a timely manner in all issues which relate to the protection of personal data. Now, this will include being invited to participate regularly in senior and middle management meetings, being present when decisions with data protection implications are taken, being consulted promptly on a data breach or another incident, having all relevant information passed to him or her in a timely manner to allow them to provide adequate advice, and having their opinion given due weight. In fact, regulators recommend organizations document the reasons when they don't follow a DPO's advice. Next, and equally important to monitor compliance with the GDPR and other privacy laws and with the organization's own data protection policies. So this will include the assignment of responsibilities, awareness raising and training of staff, collecting information to identify processing activities, and we'll come on to the Article 30 records in a moment, analyzing and checking the compliance of those processing activities, audits and monitoring complaint handling, and then advising, informing and issuing recommendations to the organization. GDPR also envisages the DPO as part of that monitoring, monitoring compliance with binding corporate rules or BCRs if you have those in place. Don't worry if you don't, it's really about international transfer and because it takes quite a lot of time and money to put in place, this tends to be done by multinational enterprises. An important role for the DPO is to advise where requested on DPIAs or data protection impact assessments, the risk assessments under GDPR and to monitor their performance. Note that word advise again. EU regulators note it's the task of the controller, not the DPO to carry out a DPIA, but the DPO can play an important role in assisting that controller. That advice could include whether or not to carry out a DPIA, how to carry out that DPIA, whether to do it in-house or to outsource it, what safeguards to apply to mitigate risks to data subjects, whether or not the DPIA was correctly carried out and whether its conclusions are compliant with GDPR. Next, the DPO is the contact point for the supervisory authority like our UK ICO and cooperates with them. This may be, for example, in relation to a request for those Article 30 records of processing, a data subject query or complaint, or liaising about high-risk processing activities. And segue from that, in all tasks, the DPO has to have due regard to the risk associated with the processing. So that means they've got to focus first off on those operations that have the highest risk to data subjects. So that's the minimum a DPO needs to do. And you can see it's all about advising, monitoring, training, and cooperating. There's not much much operational involvement and there's a good reason for that. The DPO has to carry out his or her role with independence and while they're allowed to have other tasks and duties, they cannot give rise to a conflict of interest. GDPR even states that the organizations can't instruct their DPO how to perform their tasks. So with that conflict in mind, what can't a DPO do? The UK ICO puts it neatly. The DPO shouldn't be expected to manage competing objectives that could result in data protection taking a secondary role to business interests. We cover conflict of interest more thoroughly in our video, who can be a DPO? So for now, let's just note two types of people who will be conflicted. Those involved in determining the purposes and means of processing, so the, the why and the how. That's likely to be the C-suite and senior management. Secondly, anyone involved in designing or operationalizing compliance measures because they're effectively going to be marking their own homework. So you can see that other tasks aren't impossible, but you've really got to look at that conflict of interest. So with that in mind, what else can the DPO do over and above the minimum? Well, a very lonely example from regulators is taking on the organization's task of maintaining the Article 30 records of processing. Article 30 records give an overview of all the personal data processed by an organization. And so EU regulators 
consider Article 30 records one of the key tools for a DPO to perform his or her tasks of monitoring compliance and then informing and advising the organisation. EU regulators also suggest DPOs submit an annual report on their activity to the highest levels of management. Now, if this doesn't sound as extensive as you thought it would be, I don't blame you. There's a huge amount of coverage about DPO and lots of people saying very confidently, GDPR says you must have one. Public sector will generally need one, but most private sector don't need one. And now for that bonus tip. As you can see, for many people, a DPO is a part-time or a lumpy role. And also it's very easy for the sort of people you want to be DPO with the knowledge of your business to probably be conflicted. So I strongly recommend you consider outsourcing your DPO. There are some great ones out there. It's good value. They'll bring excellent expertise and advice to the table immediately, saving you time on your compliance journey and also saving having an employee in a difficult position. So there you go. In less time than it takes to drink a cup of coffee, we've gone through the minimum tasks of a DPO. And we've seen there's a framework about conflict of interest to look at when you want to give DPOs extra tasks. Although there are some like the Article 30s that are safe for them to do. So please do look at our other videos. If you're private sector, particularly, do I need a DPO? Please visit us at keepable.com. Please use hashtag privacy kitchen to tell us the questions and topics you want covered. Please do subscribe and like if you enjoyed the video. Stay well in the meantime, and I look forward to seeing you in Privacy Kitchen again soon.